The following program has been sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions. If you ever visit the streets of Skid Row in Los Angeles, you will see ragged tents, compromised easy ups, which is someone's home. If you walk down the streets of Skid Row, you'll pass dirty blankets or old newspapers lying on top of broken wooden pallets, which is someone's bed. If you come to the corner of Fifth and Town, you will see people lined up to join Team Jesus for a hot meal in our dining room or a time of song and worship in our chapel. What you also see at Fred Jordan mission is smiles and hugs and hear wonderful stories of love and care serving those on Skid Row for 80 years feeding millions of meals caring for the saint and the sinner by declaring the goodness of God through love and action please continue to give right now while it's fresh on your heart pick up your phone or your tablet, go to your computer and type fjm.org. It is there you can give a generous gift to help us continue what we have been doing for 80 years. Sometimes it takes history a long time to reveal where you get your strength. Hi, I'm Joe Jordan. Welcome to FJM TV. You know, today I wanted to talk to you about something that we all face in life, defeat. Have you ever felt defeated? Have you ever been defeated? Well, today, as I share with you, I pray that you'll be encouraged by God's word, by God's promises, and the stories that we share today. You know, we all face defeat. No one is immune to it. Everybody at some point is defeated and they fail in life or experiences or something that you do. It's just, there's no way of getting around it. And at some point in our lives, as we face these failures, they can defeat us. They can just discourage us and make us feel like, whoa, what a failure. I'll just never be good enough. I'll never live up to what I need to live up to or it will keep us from becoming all that God created us to be. But failure is something that we all experience. Every single person on the face of the earth has experienced. The Bible says in James 3, 2, it says that we all stumble in many ways. The New King James Version of the Bible says that we all stumble in many things. And the New Revised Standard Version says, for all of us make many mistakes. So the Bible makes it very clear here that, that we all make mistakes. It goes on to talk about also that the tongue can be very difficult to control. But that doesn't give us a right, it doesn't give us a reason to just say what we want to say things that are hurtful or mean to others or to act or live our life in a way that's unpleasing to God. It's not a license to sin, but the Bible is clear that we've all fallen short of God's glory. There's only one good, the Bible says, and that's God. There's only one perfect, and that's God and His Son Jesus, and of course the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the three in one are perfect and holy and righteous. And we are created in His image and in His likeness, but make no mistake, we're not God, we're not Jesus. We need God, 
and we need Jesus in our life and we need the Holy Spirit in us to help us, to guide us and direct us. But as I wanted to go on with this point that James is pointing out is just the fact that all of us fall short. All of us miss that mark. All of us fail in things that we do. And sometimes for many of us, we fail more than we succeed. And that's a very hard thing. I talk to people all the time who make mistakes and miss the mark and keep messing up, especially with Fred Jordan missions and what we do in downtown Los Angeles. There's homelessness, of course, and there's poverty and there's hunger and there's hopelessness, but there's also addictions and there's so much loss and pain in people's lives. And for you at home, you have children or grandchildren or parents, or there's so many that you may know at home that mess up and miss the mark and fail. And for those who constantly fail on Skid Row and come through our doors at the mission, they're just so discouraged. They feel like they don't even want to try anymore. They feel like I've messed up so bad that I just can't go on. So they just keep falling short. I know personally in my life that when I would mess up and miss the mark over the years, you know, I'd fail at something. It would be very devastating at times, very discouraging. And I would keep my eyes and focus on that messed up situation. I would keep my focus on that failure instead of remembering to keep my eyes on Jesus, the victor. Because we can have victory in all things. We can take failures and those things that we mess up at and God can turn those around and make them into success for us. What do you mean success, Joe? Well, if we take failures in our life and allow God to take us through them, to learn and to grow and to become more like Jesus through them, then that's success. Remember always that Jesus is our example, the one we need to look to on how to live our life. And if we always follow his example, then we'll be okay. Not that we'll ever be perfect, we won't, because we will never be Jesus, we will never be God. But as his children who believe in him, who have placed our faith and our trust in him and him alone for the forgiveness of our sins, believing that he died on the cross for you and for me, and knowing that not only does he forgive us when we ask and we repent and confess our sins, but he's faithful and just, the Bible says, and forgives us and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We follow a perfect Jesus. We follow a perfect Savior. We are led by our perfect God and his word, and that directs us down the right path. It takes our failures and puts them in the past where they belong, and we can walk in the victory of Jesus. But James makes it very clear here in God's word, again, that, that we fail at times, we make mistakes, we stumble, we fall, and we should expect that in life. Not that you hope for it, not that you pray for it, but you should expect it. And I've learned in my life that some of the devastations and failures, it wasn't that I was looking for them and it wasn't like I wanted them to come into my life, but they appeared. And if I wasn't walking with Jesus at the time closely, if I wasn't staying in prayer and in his word, if I wasn't asking Jesus every day before I went to bed and in the morning when I got up to help me through that day and to help me to navigate through those times, then my failures seemed worse. My falling short seemed like I fell more. And you know, I just know that that was um, not my fault in the sense that I wasn't going to face things if I just keep my eyes on Jesus, because we will face things. But I know that instead of worrying when I go to bed or thinking about my failure when I wake up or waking up in the middle of the night thinking of all those things, if I would just remember Jesus 
and that he already is the victory in my life, that I already have victory because of him and what he did on the cross. If I would think about that God is with me when I go to bed and when I wake up, if I would ask him to help me to navigate through those times, through those failures, and through those things that I fall short at, they would be a much better experience. And so when I take my eyes off of Jesus and I put my eyes on those circumstances, they become a whole lot worse than if I would have looked to Jesus and asked for his help. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Life is busy. It is easy for the little things in our everyday routines to get lost in the shuffle, even when everything is going good. There are still things that get overlooked. At Fred Jordan Mission, we strive to help those we serve on Skid Row with the little things, such as having access to a bottle or even just a cup of clean water when they're thirsty. How about a cup of coffee and a donut just to get your day going? Or taking for granted having shelter from the weather, hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Did you know a high percentage of those here on Skid Row who we call homeless are not drug addicts or alcoholics or even mentally unstable? No, they are fellow Americans who maybe a few months ago were paycheck to paycheck from eviction or recently laid off from their job or just down and out on their luck. Your act of kindness through prayer, through your financial gifts today, help those who come through our doors for socks, toothbrush, soap, a lunchtime snack, and yes, even water. So let this be a reminder to be thankful for the little things. Again, James makes it very clear in the word here that we make mistakes, we stumble, we fall, it's part of life. I shared with you some of my stories about falling short, taking my eyes off of Jesus and putting them on the circumstances or the situation. And, you know, for me, I feel like in times of failure and being defeated, that if I don't look to Jesus, I get a little stuck. Maybe you felt like that before, you get stuck in that, in that moment of failure. Fear comes in, can I overcome this? What am I gonna do? How can I overcome this? And how can I defeat this? But I found that without Jesus and without asking him to intervene, that time of being stuck in it just goes further and longer than it probably should. And again, we're all going to face things. We're all going to have losses, defeats, failures, setbacks in our life. It, it says it in God's word, no one's perfect but God. But even though we make mistakes, we can't allow our defeat, our failures to define our future. We can't allow it to affect what God has for us. Because the enemy, Satan, is very clear that his plan is to distract us, to take our eyes off of Jesus, to not look at Jesus and the victory we have in Jesus. The Bible makes it very clear that we have victory in Jesus because of who he is, because of what he's done for us. And so if we have victory in Jesus, the enemy does not want us to focus and think about that. No, he wants us to wallow and sit and just like pigs in the mud, stay in that dirty, rotten place where we just continue to be in the mud and to be stuck and to not walk in that victory. One author said it like this, the difference between an average person and achieving person is their perception and the response to failure. Pretty important. How do you respond to failure? How do I respond to failure? Another author wrote this, there is no doubt in my mind that there are many ways to be a winner, but there is only one way to be a loser. 
and that is to fail and not look beyond the failure. You know, the times that I've failed in my life, that I've fallen short, it, it's not a great thing at all. I remember whether it be in sports or whether it was in academics when I was in college, whether it was when I was in Bible school and I'd mess up on some exam. And it always really was not great when you mess up on a Bible exam. Here you are going to try to be, you know, the best Christian, the best follower of Jesus. You know, you, you want to become a pastor or a leader in ministry. You would have Fred Jordan as your father to follow the example who had been preaching, teaching, and reading God's Word for a hundred years, you know, and, and, and that's one of your examples. And you just want to serve Jesus the best you can. And then before you know it, you have this simple Bible exam that you thought was simple. You study your little heart out. And some of us are better at school than others. And I always had to really work for mine. And then you fail and you're like, oh, sorry, Lord. I shouldn't fail at something like that. But that always really got me. And I don't know about you at home, what gets you? What really discourages you? What really brings you down? But I know for me, that was one of them, is not doing well on those exams in Bible school. But you know what I did? I got up, as a friend said, I got over it and I got on with it. I studied harder next time. I worked harder the next time. I read more the next time. I listened better in class. I tried to take better notes. And you know what? Little by little, I did better. And you know what, graduating from college and graduating then from Bible school and, you know, um, God blessed me and I was able to get a degree in pastoral ministry and counseling and theology. But without Jesus, without asking him and without really going to him after those times of messing up and failing on tests and exams, I probably would have just given up. But I realized through all of that, how can I look at that circumstance, at that one exam, at that one class, that I never failed at a full class, but even an exam and say, that's who I am, that's my, that's my future. No, I, I looked to Jesus and I said, wow, you, you've already won the war. I might be losing a few battles. I might be messing up on a few things, but I am not going to let the enemy rob me, steal from me. And I want to encourage you, don't let him do it to you. Because greater is he who is in me and you as Christians and followers of Jesus than he that is in the world. You see, we have victory in Jesus. And we always have to remember that through all that we go through. But you know, it's hard sometimes. There's a lot of fear involved. And again, remember, God is love, the Bible says, and the Bible also says, perfect love cast out all fear. So keep Jesus close to you. Keep God and his word close to you. And his perfect love and who he is will keep you from living in fear, walking in fear, and letting fear control you and live in your failures. You know, it wasn't long ago. In fact, just a few months ago, I was playing on my uh, travel tournament softball team and we were going into the bottom which is you know the last inning bottom of the seventh inning down by 13 down by 13 and uh, it was a really good major team that we were playing and um, every guy on my team for the first time in my life happens to be a believer and just because you're a believer doesn't mean you're a great softball player but we actually have like 13 really good major level players that all love Jesus and care more about being honoring to Jesus on the field and off the field than just winning games, which is kind of the first time in my life it's ever been like that. And so playing with these guys was fun, but we were down by 13. We went in there to the dugout and just said, you know what? We're gonna do our best. 
we're going to praise God if we win, we're going to praise God if we lose, but we're going to go and we're going to give it our all and our best. And I was third up and I went up and, and hit a double, hit two guys in. Anyway, before you know it, it was like, wow, we have five runs in, seven runs in, then we got an out, eight runs in, nine runs out, two, two in, and then we still needed like four runs, two more came, two more came, and then the guy before me got up and he got on, and here we are batting through the lineup a couple of times. So there's a man on second base and I'm up with two outs and all the pressure was on me. And I was just like, well, I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna hit it as hard as I can. And you know what? We might've been down by 13, but now we're only down by, well, now we are tied. Now we just have to get one run in to win the game with two outs. And I got up and I just asked the Lord, I, you know, he might not care about softball, but I knew he cared about me. And I just said, Lord, help me to hit the ball and help me to hit the ball hard. No matter what, just hit the ball hard. And uh, I'll never forget that moment. I got up, first pitch was a perfect strike. I hit it. I hit a gap in left center field and about three feet from the top of the wall, hit the wall and scored the guy from second. It was a walk off, we won the game and we came together and prayed. But what was so great after that is the team that should have beat us, I mean, they were up by 13, came out with us. We invited them to pray, the umpire came out and we all got on our knees. There was like 26 grown men, um, all of my age. And we all knelt before that dirt and before God and just thanked him. And both teams then shook hands at the end. And I just give God the glory. You say, well, what's that have to do with anything, Joe? I mean, it's, it's, it's a softball game. But you know what? I could have gone up there with fear. And if I did, and I'm gonna make an out, I would have made an out. And I didn't let fear strip away from the opportunity to play the game and have fun. If I would have struck out, if I would have got out, it would have been okay too, because I trust Jesus. The point in the whole thing is, is don't let fear, don't let circumstances, don't let situations, don't let things that seem overwhelming to you or out of reach to you define how you react and go through them. You know, in closing, I just wanna share this with you. Focus on the future. Paul said it best, forgetting what is behind, I press on to what is ahead. Run the race, run the race that God has put in your life before you without fear of failure and know that the prize in Christ Jesus, the prize that we have in spending eternity with him will be ours. Jesus has a bright future for you and for me. And lastly, just trust Jesus with everything you have. And as we see in Joel chapter two, verse 25, it says this, I will restore the years the locusts have stolen away. Isaiah 61 says, I will restore beauty for ashes. A new beginning starts, a new beginning starts with the renewed faith in God, with a new trust in Jesus Christ. If you've never trusted him before, the Bible just says, believe and receive Jesus. Ask him to forgive you of the sins in your life and to become your Lord and Savior, he will. And he will save you. If you already know him, and maybe you're just walking in defeat, maybe you, you failed one too many times, just ask God to help you in those times, to learn from them and to become more like Jesus. Let today be your new beginning. If you ever visit the streets of Skid Row in Los Angeles, you will see ragged tents, compromised easy ups, which is someone's home. If you walk down the streets of Skid Row, you'll pass dirty blankets or old newspapers lying on top of broken wooden pallets, which is someone's bed. If you come to the corner of Fifth and Town, you will see people lined up to join Team Jesus for a hot meal in our dining room or a time of song and worship in our chapel. What you also see at 
Fred Jordan mission is smiles and hugs and hear wonderful stories of love and care. Serving those on Skid Row for 80 years, feeding millions of meals, caring for the saint and the sinner by declaring the goodness of God through love and action. Please continue to give right now while it's fresh on your heart. Pick up your phone or your tablet, go to your computer and type fjm.org. It is there you can give a generous gift to help us continue what we have been doing for 80 years. Thanks for joining us today. You know, I just wanted to give you an opportunity to be a part of Fred Jordan Missions and FJM TV. Maybe you watch every week, maybe you've never watched before, but I want you to know our mission, our calling, our heart is to serve Jesus by serving those in need. We say it like this, we are about declaring and demonstrating the love of God to those who are hungry, homeless, helpless, and hopeless by sharing with them the hope of Jesus Christ every day. We do that by, of course, sharing that Jesus loves them, that Jesus cares, just like Jesus loves you and me and cares for us, and he died on the cross for us, but we also demonstrate his love by meeting the needs of the poor, caring for those who are hungry, living on the streets, and everywhere we go. You can be a part of that by donating, by volunteering, by being a partner of Fred Jordan Missions. You can go online to fgm.org, you can go to our social media platforms, you can reach out to us in so many different ways. You can come to the mission and volunteer and be the hands and feet of Jesus. But I know this for sure, after all of these years of serving Jesus by serving others, when you do unto the least of these, the Bible says, you've done for Jesus. Today, will you partner with us if you don't already? And if you do, thank you so much. Because I know that I can do a good thing and you can do a good thing and others can do a good thing. But together, we can do extraordinary things as Jesus uses us to touch people's hearts and lives everywhere we go. Join us in feeding hungry children and their families by phoning today, 844-FJM-FOOD, or donating online, fjm.org. That's fjm.org. Or mail your check to Fred Jordan Mission, P.O. Box 12345, Covina, California, 91722. Please, will you help? The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Fred Jordan Missions.